Well, and not every offense that has decided it can win games by running the football is avoiding the possibility of paying big money to receivers. That's kind of the unspoken surprise in what the Eagles did last night. They evolved toward a run-based offense last year, and then lo and behold, at a time when people were thinking, are they going to position themselves for Jamison Williams? What's Harry Roseman got up his sleeve? People thought it was a trip back into the top 10. No, it was a trip down to Nashville to snatch A.J. Brown away from the Titans to pay him $25 million a year on a long-term deal, a four-year extension, $25 million per year in new money. A.J. Brown said today he would have stayed if the Titans had simply offered $22 million a year. They didn't even offer twenty. Apparently, they only offered sixteen. I mean, that's an insult. In today's it market, is. don't even make the offer. When the market is what it is, if you are going to come in that low, you are you are being more respectful to your player if you say, AJ, we just philosophically are deciding we're not going to participate in the market that currently exists for receivers, and we're going to facilitate your effort to find a place where you can thrive and you can be fairly compensated for what you bring to the table. That's what they should have done. Yeah, and that's, a, I mean, look, that's the feeling I got from the Chiefs and Tyreek Hill, right? I mean, like there was a, 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 a probably a certain level where the Chiefs were comfortable, but it just seems like there was not the insulting offer that went from Kansas City to, you know, Drew Rosenhaus, uh, Tyreek Hill's representation. And eventually it's just like, okay, well, there are a couple teams here, the Jets and the Dolphins, and let's see who comes up with the better compensation package. So look, the, the Eagles, I love what they've done. You know, when you are talking about Devontae Smith and, and A.J. Brown as your top two pass catchers, that's a pretty darn good offense. Now, is Jalen Hurts going to be the best quarterback for that system? I don't know. But this is a, another example of a quarterback basically having everything around him that he can uh, to get a good gauge on whether or not he can succeed, whether or not he can be a franchise quarterback. So there's no real excuses for Jalen Hurts here as he's going into year three. And heck, the, the Eagles, I mean, who's to say they can't win the NFC East? All right. It seems like every year there's another team that that's different that wins the NFC East. I see how the Eagles have gotten themselves better. I don't necessarily see how the Cowboys are all that much better. I think the Eagles can definitely challenge for that division now. And it's going to be interesting to see what the offense looks like with A.J. Brown. Will A.J. Brown be deployed like Debo Samuel? Because, look, you don't have to make big throws down the field into big spots if you can just – do a little jet sweep, do a little bubble screen. And A.J. Brown's got the, the build, and he's got the thickness, and he's got the ability to really create havoc that way if that's what the Eagles choose to do. So fascinating to see what they do with him. And even more fascinating, this ongoing philosophical divide in the NFL between the teams that are willing to cough up the money and the draft pick compensation to get a receiver and the teams that would rather draft a receiver and the intersection last night prominently was the Tennessee Titans were not willing to pay the guy that we got three years ago we scratched off the lottery ticket it's a winner but we don't want to keep that ticket we're going to trade it in and get another lottery ticket hope it's a winner but it's going to be cheaper and we can have that guy for up to five years which as a practical matter means they probably get four years out of Trayvon Burks before he gets in this position where it's getting awkward, it's getting ugly, and they may have to trade him again. But th this, is, this is a litmus test of whether or not this approach works. This idea, as articulated by Scott McLuhan a couple of weeks ago, the idea that you can say, all right, receiver doesn't really affect a game that much. He touches the ball six or eight times. It's not worth big money. I'll go draft another one. Okay, well, you better hope you draft the right one because for every Justin Jefferson, there is a Jalen Rieger. And you better hope you didn't get the Jalen Rieger when you used the pick that was al aligned with the team that drafted Jalen Rieger a couple years ago, creating the need to go get A.J. Brown in the first place. Well, right, exactly. But, you know, that's that's why you paid the scouting staff, right? And it's interesting to me, too. But they still get it wrong. At... It doesn't I matter know. how much you spend. We know they still get it wrong because you can't get inside get what the guy's going to be. Well, you you can and you can't. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's that's why either guys go on to become GMs or they don't. I right? like you if you get the picks right, then you get to continue to be employed. If you don't, you you don't. Like, Harry, the, they got it wrong when to kill Harry. Bill Belichick, one of the great minds of all time okay. in football, got it flat out wrong when to kill Harry yeah. and should have known, but still did it. 
Okay, but Bill Belichick has won six Super Bowls as a head coach. So, like, Bill Belichick gets all the mulligans he wants because he's got he's got rings, he's got trophies. You know, I don't know. Like, you, if you listen to Robert Kraft, if you if oh, you listen yeah. to Robert Kraft, I think he's running out. I think his mulligan bag is starting to get a little light. I, I, oh, I, yeah, that's sure, a different Dan. topic altogether. Let's, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Robert, let's see Robert Kraft try to fire Bill Belichick and see what happens. Wait a minute. Yeah, wait, okay. a minute. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, let, let's let's game this out a little bit. It's been three years okay. since they won a playoff game. What's the over under? It's unthinkable that the Patriots would go another three years without winning a playoff game. But if they go three more yes. years without winning a playoff game, at what point? I don't know. I don't know what six Super Bowls is worth. I don't know how long that lasts. I don't know how much time that buys you. It doesn't buy you a lifetime contract. It just doesn't. Because at some point, the natives up in New England are going to get restless. They're not going to want to come to the games. They're not going to be happy about the team. You know how the, the New England, they're, they're spoiled. They're, they're still trying to work through this phase of, hey, we used to run the league, and now we're, what are we? If they have three more years without winning uh, a, a, a playoff game, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready to assume anything. This is the NFL, not for long. Who said that? Uh, it was, uh, what's his name? The, the Jerry Glanville. NFL stands for not for long. You, 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 Bill Belichick cannot just indefinitely be mediocre. He's the greatest coach of all time, Mike. I don't know what you're talking about. The, the, you're talking okay. three years down the line. What are you doing? This is like the, the discussion just, on the NBA, which I know you don't care about. But like they're talking about Doc Rivers who? and what? Like, you know, come on, this right. is ridiculous. I'm just telling you. I'm telling you. We every once in a while a topic organically comes up and it's worth talking about a little bit. I don't all think right. he has an indefinite pass. Traylon Burks does not yeah. have an indefinite pass because here's the thing: he comes into Tennessee now as the replacement for AJ Brown, and there's going to be an expectation that he that he pans out and pans out quickly to replace AJ Brown. Here he is on comparisons that immediately were made and had been made before the draft between him and AJ Brown. Uh, no, sir, not at all. Um, Cause I'm, I'm myself. I'm trailing Burks. Um, I don't com like, like usually I don't compare myself to anyone cause I'm myself. Um, there's no other person like me. Um, and I, I handle my business the right way. And that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, that's Leo. the right attitude. But like, can we talk about that <laughs> that's angle? some high level. That that's angle? some high level. <laughs> that's some high level video. Why even bother to record the video? Just make it an audio message. Um, but but look, look, I think one of the reasons why some first round receivers don't pan out, there is too much pressure put on them. And there's a ton of pressure. This guy is the test case. He's the guinea pig for the idea. We have good receiver that we don't want to pay. We remove him from the football machine. We put in the new part and we expect it to operate the exact same way the part that we removed did. And I, I that you better get up to speed quickly. I mean, that was why uh, we were saying about the Packers and the Chiefs. If you draft a first round receiver, that guy's expected to walk through the door and be the number one guy. That's definitely what Traylon Burks is expected to do. Absolutely it is. But that's the same thing that Justin Jefferson was expected to do, right? And he did it. And granted, you know, they, the, the, the uh, Minnesota Vikings got more out of Stephon Diggs than um, the Titans did out of A.J. Brown, just simply from the, the fact that, like, you know, Diggs was there for five years, Brown was there for three years, right? But at the same time, you have to be able to get that right. And so if they don't get that right, then John Robinson is probably going to be out of a job. I, that's the way these things work. I mean, every single year, the draft is basically the GM's resume. The GMs know this. So if you're going to make that deal and you're going to ship away A.J. Brown and you're going to give him that insulting offer and you're just going to say, yeah, well, Derrick Henry is the centerpiece of our offense and that's why we're going to devalue the wide receiver position the way we are and we feel like we can pick this guy and he's going to be, he's going to be good and he's going to do exactly what we need. You, you better be right, you know, because they do have a guy in Robert Woods who I think is one of the most underrated receivers in the league, but he's coming off an ACL. If you can't get Burks up to speed very quickly and on the same page with Ryan Tannehill, that's going to be a real problem for the Titans in the AFC South, a division which they have done a really, really good job of running over the last few years. The uh, Titans a year ago had A.J. Brown and Julio Jones as of June and plenty of expectations and excitement about what that offense could be. And Jones didn't pan out. And now A.J. Brown is 
gone. It's Traylon Burks and, as you mentioned, Robert Woods, and we'll see what they can do. And I have them on my short list of teams I'm watching tonight as the quarterback slide because Mm -hmm. Ryan Tannehill didn't show up for the start of the offseason program. There was no explanation as to why he wasn't there. This kind of thing that, from a PR standpoint, the team or the player needs to get the alternate explanation out there so people don't think there's an issue and there could be an issue and who knows how much longer he's the guy. And Derrick Henry, how long can he perform the way that he has? This is a team that's kind of at a crossroads now, and they've made a decision. They reached a fork in the road, and they made a very, very challenging decision that we'll see how it pans out for them with Traylon Burks, without A.J. Brown as they move forward. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.